Good morning. Today, we're well on the way in Svirat HaOmer. <clears throat> and next week, God willing, we'll be speaking about Shavuot because that's where we will be just on the verge of Shavuot. So I wanna to talk today about this period between Pesach and Shavuot, Passover and Shavuot, the giving of the 10 commandments on Mount Sinai and what it means. So for 210 years, our ancestors lived in darkness, enslaved by the Egyptians in their debased society. But the elders spoke about God's age old promise that they would one day leave this place. And they spoke about a mountaintop on which God would show himself to them and take them as his chosen people and give them his Torah, the revelation of his wisdom and will. So they spoke about this time when they would be in a land and they would live with divine providence and in which they would fulfill their destiny as a light unto the nations. But it seemed impossible to get out of where they were. But then at the stroke of midnight on the 15th of Nisan in 2448, which in the secular calendar is 1313 BCE, the Holy One, blessed be he, as it says in the Haggadah, revealed himself to them and revealed them. And every Passover were given the gift of freedom. But in order to experience this gift of the freedom that God gave us on Passover, we have to like take the treasure, open it up and count what it is. So God didn't immediately take the people to Mount Sinai. God wanted it to be their journey. And this is the period of the journeying between Passover and Shavuot. They were out of Egypt, but Egypt was very much within them. In order to go from inner slavery to freedom, the people had to integrate the gift that they had received on Passover. So for seven weeks, they struggled to refine the seven traits of their souls, to cleanse it of the profanity of Egypt and making themselves worthy candidates for the divine choice. But this was something they had to achieve on their own. But the first vision of the divine light that brought them out of Egypt inspired them to go forward on their journey. They got a huge freedom and a huge taste of God and God's presence on the night of Passover. But then they had to run out of Egypt. And even though they were free on the outside, they still weren't free on the inside. And even as we know that one week later, the Egyptians pursued them and tried to bring them back. So on the night of Passover, the people became free, but freedom became freedom too. And it became a process. And that's what we're talking about today, the process of integrating this freedom into who we are. Every year on the first night of Passover, we commemorate the nights, the events of that night of the Exodus. And through the Seder observances, we're re-experiencing that liberating vision, which inspires our yearly coming out of our personal Egypt and our internal liberation from slavery to freedom and from darkness to a great light. So the revelation from Egypt is a flash which changed the people forever. But how do you bring that flash into a reality? Now, this is something I'm sure everyone has experienced a moment of clarity, a moment of understanding, an insight. But then we know that that has to be brought into reality in order to make it happen. So on the following day, the day after the first night of Passover, we begin our 49-day journey to Sinai, which is reenacting each year with the counting of the Omer. 
I just want to mention that an omer is actually a measurement of barley, something like 43 ounces, and that was offered at the Holy Temple in Jerusalem. And that was representing the refinement of the animal soul of man because the barley is representing animal food. So now we don't have the temple standing. So the offering of the barley is not being done in the temple, but we are still doing the counting and doing the work. And I think it's important to understand what that work is, how we integrate that freedom into ourselves, which is basically something to understand for all the time. But now that we're coming through, I felt like that it was important to, to talk about what it is and what we are accomplishing and how it's being accomplished. So, <clears throat> so we're going through this journey of self-refinement. The 50th day, in other words, starting from the night after the first night of Passover, and we count at night. So we had Passover, then it becomes night, and then we count the first called day of the Omer, because like Shabbat, our day begins at night. Night, day, that's Shabbat. So we start to count night, day, the next night we count the second day. So what is the 50th day? The 50th day is the festival of Shavuot, our annual re-experiencing of the giving of the Torah, where we once again stand at Sinai to receive God's communication of his wisdom and will and be chosen as God's own kingdom of priests and a holy nation. So the Torah instructs us to count the days from Passover to Shavuot. You shall count for yourselves from the morrow of the Shabbat, meaning from the night that right after Shabbat, but it's, he really means Pesach, from the day on which you bring the Omer offering, seven complete weeks they shall be. Until the morrow of the seventh week, you shall count 50 days. And you should proclaim that very day a holy festival. So just to mention this, Shavuot is, we are told to count seven weeks, 50 days. Now, seven weeks, if you do the math, seven times seven is 49. So what is this 50th day? Now, the 50th day is Shavuot. So on the seventh day, we say today is, when we're counting, we say today is seven days, which are one week of the Omer. In other words, we say one week, one week and one day, one week and two days. So we're counting both the days and the weeks. So, not, so we're counting both. Now, on the seventh day, we say today is seven days, which is one week of the Omer, until the last night of the count, when we say today is 49 days, which are seven weeks to the Omer. So now we've been commanded to count the the seven, the seven weeks, we counted them. And then what? The name of the festival that ends the count is Shavuot, which means weeks, showing that it's the result of the seven week count from the second day of Passover. Shavuot is the only festival that does not have a fixed calendar date, but is defined as the 50th day of the Omer count. Now, Kabbalistic teaching explains that there are seven basic drives in the human character. I'm going to go through the list. They are, and then we'll talk about each of these qualities. Chesed, which means love and giving. Chesed, which means love and giving. Givura, which is awe and restraint. Tiferet, which is harmony and compassion. Netzach is victory and ambition. Hod is humility and devotion. Yesod is bonding and truth. And Malchut is regality and receptiveness. 
Now, there are 10 spherot, and 10 is corresponding to the attributes of the human soul. So the first three, Chachma, Bina, and Dat, Hold up the sign for a moment. We have Keter above, which is the crown, which is above the head. Then we have Chachma, Bina, and Dot. And these are the three intellectual faculties, which are not part of the sphere account, but it has to do with the refinement of the human character and emotions. And then we begin with Chesed. Gvura, Tiferet, Netzach, Hod, Yesod, and Malchut. Um, I'm here where we talk about the intellectual qualities. My personal belief is that this is what we're involved in on Pesach, on the on the night of the Seder, because here in Keter. It says that what we're integrating is emuna. Emuna is in keter. It's above us. So we're integrating the emuna. And that's what we're really doing is taking that emuna and bringing it all the way in. So the way that I see this is that we're taking the quality that's above our head that's coming from God that we're bringing that soul quality into ourselves. And on the night of the Seder, we're bringing in the Emunah. And so that's in the Keter, Chachma, and Bina. And then we want to bring that Emunah all the way in to our emotional qualities. And when they have been brought all the way into our emotional qualities, after the bottom here, we are ready to receive the top, which means that we are ready to have <clears throat> to have Hashem reveal himself to us because now we become ready to receive godliness. So I'm going to point out some more details about this. Each of these emotional attributes are multifaceted. So we're going to be working not on the intellectual which as far as I'm concerned, basically took place on the Seder, but on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven qualities, which are like the seven qualities of the seven weeks. That's exactly what we're doing. We're bringing the godliness, we're bringing the amuna into all of our being, into our emotional character traits, all the way through until when it becomes Shavuot, we are ready to greet Hashem at Har Sinai. Now, we have to talk about what it means that each of these attributes are multifaceted. Each of these, each of these traits are nuances of all seven. In other words, let's say that on the week of Chesed, that was the first week, we're going to talk about, I mean, when we're working on it, we'll work on chesed. So we work on chesed and chesed of chesed. We're gonna talk a little bit about what that means. Then gavura of chesed. So the whole week we're learning, we're working on chesed. Gavura sheba chesed, tefera sheba chesed, netzach sheba chesed, yesod sheba chesed. In other words, each of these within chesed. So this multifacetedness means that each quality is going to be worked on for a whole week. So on each of the seven days of the week, we refine another of the seven aspects of the week's attributes. So when we fulfill the myth of counting the days and the weeks from Passover to Shavuot, each of the seven weeks is devoted to a different attribute. For example, on the week devoted to kindness, we devote one day to refining that aspect of kindness that needs kindness, or another one that needs compassion. In other words, compassion of kindness, or gavurashab 
that is part of kindness. We're going to speak about this as we go on. During the week when we're refining beauty, which is Tiferet, we spend one day refining the aspect of beauty that requires dignity, another aspect of that beauty that requires humility, until we have refined all seven aspects of beauty. Ultimately, all the character traits derive from combinations of these seven basic ones. So each quality continually interacts with the others. And in doing that, it has the capacity to modify its expression and effect. So I want to talk about the whole picture in just a moment. But just to give the simplest example, let's talk about chesed, chesed, which is kindness. Chesed, which is kindness. Let's see. So in Chesed, which is kindness, how, how are we kind? There's something to think about. If you want to, simplest, simplest example, you want to be kind to your child or your grandchild, and they're little, and they want a lollipop. And so kindness of kindness is sure, sweetie, here, you can have a lollipop. Then they finish, they say, I want another lollipop. Okay, all right, sweetie, you could have another lollipop. So it's chesed of chesed, loving kindness of, the way that you're showing and expressing this kindness is by being generous because kindness has to do, chesed has to do with giving. So you give. Okay, now they're up to the third lollipop. And you start to think, is this real kindness? I have a whole bag of lollipops. And she's gonna to try to go through as much of this bag as she can. Is this kindness to say, sure, five, six, seven, sh whatever you want, you can have the whole bag, go for it. Is that true kindness? Or maybe after the second lollipop, maybe even after the first lollipop, true kindness, if you really want to be kind, then maybe what has to happen is that you go from chesed and you have to hold back. You're still working on the chesed. You still want to be loving, loving and kind and giving, but maybe it's the time to say givura of chesed. You know, sweetie, you already had two lollipops. I really love you. I'm happy to give you a lollipop, but I think that was enough. So not today, but you can ask me tomorrow. Now, you can see how holding back at this moment is an aspect of true giving more than giving. I once told that to to one of my children, I said, the easiest thing to do is say yes. Sure, whatever you want, why not? No problem. But that if a mother really loves her child, that there are times that she has to say, no, that's not a good idea. We're not going to buy that. That's not good for you. But it's still part of kindness. And she, she understood that right away, that part of real loving and giving is to say no, and that's part of the love. Now, Tiferet is beauty and harmony. And if you really want to give in a beautiful, harmonious way, then sometimes what you have to do, and I want you, I'm going to, I want to point this out. This is a triangle. Do you see? Chesed, Gavura, and Tiferet looks like a triangle. Then we're going to go to Netzach, Chod, and Yesod, which are also a triangle. So we have actually triangles here, two extremes, one on the right side, a column on the right side, a column on the left side, and a column in the center. So we see that Tiferet, which is beauty and harmony, is not exactly in the middle between, between Chesed and Gevura, because we see that Chesed is giving, Gavura is restraint, holding back. 
And Tiferet is not the balance in between them. Tiferet is further. So when a person has the ability to have chesed and gavura, then the next level is Tiferet, which is further on. So now that if I have the ability to say, yes, I love you, you could have two lollipops, of course. Now I'm saying, I love you, so I don't want you to, you know, not feel well for the lollipops. It's not good for your teeth. And we say gavur. And this is on the simplest level. This is not deep, complicated growing, although we use all of this within ourselves. Then we come to Tiferet, and we could say, you know what? See this pretty lollipop? I'm going to put this right here for Shabbos. On Shabbos, remind me that I have a lollipop for you. Now, wait a minute. Did you give her this lollipop or you did not give her this lollipop? What you actually did, so, a beautiful, harmonious, hi. what you did was- a, I have things in my cradle. What you did was a beautiful, harmonious, finding a way Hada. to say- Hadale. It's a good time to call the kids. Mute. Hit one second. Wonderful. Things are like Bring it here. Let's mute. It's open. I leave it open. Shh. Let's see. Mute all. Back to us. Okay, fine. Okay, so what we see is that on this third level, it's all we're talking about chesed. That what we did was, when we said about the lollipops, yes, of course, sweetie, chesed. Give, give, give. You can have two lollipops, no problem. Enjoy them. Gavura, I think that's enough. See, that's on the opposite side. But when we get to Teferet, which is compassion and beauty, now we have the understanding of how to say yes, how to say no, and how to beautifully navigate between the yes and the no. So now we're saying you had, to, yeah, sure, I have two lollipops. Here, I think that was enough. I really love you, so I don't want you to not feel good. So that was a no, but it's part of the loving kindness. Then the tiferet becomes, see this beautiful lollipop I'm putting here right on the shelf, and this is for you. And Shabbos come over and say, could I have my Shabbos lollipop? And she goes, and I actually tried this with a grandchild. Yeah, that's great. Because what we actually did was we did not give them the lollipop now. But in loving kindness, we found a beautiful way to navigate beyond the absolute yes or the absolute no until we found a compassionate way. And they go, wow, I'm going to have a really nice lollipop on Shabbos. It's the prettiest one. So they feel they were given to, but we didn't give it that way. Now you could see how all of this is coming out of love. So what we see is that on every day, when we're working on each of these, what we're doing is developing these traits in actuality. Now this goes for ourselves also, obviously. These are deep concepts where if I love myself, and you know, it's via hakamo, you should love your fellow as you love yourself, or if you love someone else, what is true giving? And where is a place where if I really love myself, that means, what does it mean? Maybe I shouldn't something because if I really love myself, then I don't have to do something that's not good for me. So out of love, I'm going to say no to myself. Now is not the right time for that. So we have this working on one whole week <clears throat> on each quality, a whole week of working on chesed, a whole week of working on gevura, a whole week of working on tiferet, a whole week of working on netzach, a whole week of learn, working on hod. Actually, right now we are on a whole work of working on yesod, a whole week of working on malchut. And when we finish malchut, sheba malchut, malchut, that's in malchut, because again, we'll go through chesed of malchut, gevura of malchut, tiferet of malchut, all of this. When we finish Machut and Machut, that's day 49, whew, then we are standing at the bottom of the mountain, ready to receive God from above. So 
And it's essential to remember that the purpose of all of this work of counting the Omer is to bring godliness into ourselves, into how we live. Fixing our character traits is for a purpose. It's for bringing the higher into who we are and bringing that all into our minds and then into our hearts and then into our qualities that are going to bring things down into reality. So now we're talking about the emotional attributes, chesed, gavura, and teferet, and working to cultivate a more developed second nature, which is refined. So this is the week, the work of the first of the three weeks of the counting of the Omer. Now, I just want to say that, what does it mean a second nature? People come into the world and they have a nature. If you watch, you could see really infants have a nature already. Ellie? And some people oh, yeah. want yeah. to, oh, some people yeah. want to just get, one second. One second. No look, right? One second. No. One second. No. No. Hard to get everything. No, no, stop. Again. No. Okay, just a second. Okay. So what we yes. There. So what we want to do is what does it mean a second nature? Some people are givers by nature. They want to say yes all the time. Sure, yes, absolutely. You want my toy? You can have my toy. You want, sure. You know, you want to go someplace? Let's go. It's a nature. The person who by nature wants to say, sure, you want to go someplace? You want me to come with you? Sure, absolutely. It's a nature. Another nature is no. No, I don't want to go. I have other things to do. Want me to do something with you? No way. I'm not doing it. I'm busy. It's a nature. Refining the qualities of our nature brings us to a second nature. What does that mean? That the person who is a giver naturally has to learn how to give in the way that the Torah wants us to give. That, you know, somebody calls you on Friday who you just met and says, Friday afternoon, let's go to the beach. I'm visiting California, let's go to the beach. Now, the nature of that person would be to say, sure, let's go to the beach because they their first nature is to say yes. If they have developed their nature, they're able to have gavura of chesed to say, whoa, just a minute, Friday afternoon, no. I have to be able to say, no, I can't go to the beach on Friday afternoon. There's going to be traffic. I'm not going to get back before Shabbat. I would love to go with you another time, but I can't go with you now. Now, that at a certain point becomes part of our nature, our second nature, where the giver doesn't give to everything or say yes all the time. Or... What this process is doing is showing the giver how and when to know how to give. So the person might say, Chesed of Chesed, I would love to go with you. Gavur of Chesed, I can't go with you. Tiferet Sheb Chesed, I think, I think that you went to Hebrew school once. Would you like to come to us for Shabbat instead of going to the beach? So Tiferet of Chesed is saying, how can I work this out in a beautiful way? She wants, does she want to go to the beach or does she want to be with me? She wants to go to the beach. Okay, I can't go with her. If she wants to do something with me, come for Shabbat. Tiferet Sheba Chesed. So in doing this work, we ourselves become multifaceted. We become refined. We learn that there's more to yes than yes. There's more to giving than giving. There is a refinement 
of how we give in which way. So that's just the first quality. So we're working to cultivate the second nature. And this is what we're doing each week. There is a lot more to be said about this. Each of these has, a, a, has more to be said about it. There's a lot to talk about with Omer. When we get to, so Chesed, Gavur, and Tiferet that I showed you in the simplest way are called the emotional traits. Chesed is a feeling of love. Like let's say from above, above, comes into me that somebody might say they would like to visit their elderly mother who lives in a different state. So in Chesed, they go, oh, my mother, I would love to see her. She would love a visit from me. That would be so wonderful. In Gavura, the person might say, I can't do that right now. Next week is my child's school play. I, I can't just drop out now and do that. I, I can't, I would love to, I would love to, but there has to be a boundary. I have to be here for my child's event next week. Teferet, oh gosh, how could I work this out? Like, is there a way to work it out? I don't want my mother to have to wait for two weeks. What, what's an option? Is it possible that I could go just for two days this week and be back for the play next week? Is that possible? So in Teferet, there's compassion. I, I can't just disappear from my daughter, but I would love to be here from my mother. In Teferet, which is compassion and beauty, is there a beautiful way to work this out? Now, those are all in the emotions. Then comes Netzach, Hod, and Yesod which is another triangle. These are behavioral. What does it mean behavioral? And then we head into Malchut. Behavioral means that the emotions are meant to bring out actual behavior because this is also part of character rectification. What happens if I say, and it does happen, people say, yeah, that was such a good idea, but I guess there's nothing I could do about it. In other words, the thought came from above, now come the feelings. But then what happens a lot of times is that it stops right there. And people go, oh, that was a good thought. I'm, I'm giving examples that are very simple. There are so many deep examples of working on ourselves, but I'm, I would like us to understand the concept itself. Now, what should happen once I got to, oh, I would love to see my mother. I can't, I have to be here for my daughter next week. To Ferret, there must, I wish I could. I mean, there must be a beautiful, compassionate solution to this. Ah, now we go to the behavioral triad, Netzach, Hod, and Yesod. Okay, what is Netzach? Netzach is where we are going to go to a, like a desire to have real behavior. Now, this is all part, it could be all part of the chesed. In other words, I, I really want to see my mother, or it could be part of the gavur. I can't, I have to be here for my daughter, or it could be part of the compassion, but it's got to move forward. It's kind of like slalom. That when people are skiing, it comes from above, different chart, comes from above, then it comes down to chesed, gevorah, tiferet, netzachod, yesod, woo, malchut, all the way through. So now in tiferet, in netzach. Netzach is the place of action, victory, eternity, where we move forward. It's also true that each of these qualities has godly qualities, inner qualities that we talk about in Hasidus, how we experience it. So just for a moment, let me add, the inner quality of chesed is ahava, love. So chesed is giving, 
the inner quality that we feel is ahava, which is love. The gavura, which is the quality of might or awe, we feel it on the inside more as awe than as might. Like, I don't want to do what God doesn't want me to do. Now, the third quality, which is tiferet, the inner quality is rachamim. This is mercy or beauty. And we want to do this compassion a beautiful way. Now, some of these are, now we're getting to some parts that are interesting and a little more complex. Netzach is victory and eternity. Okay, let me just say that the right arm, that chesed is like the right arm, gavur is like the left arm, tiferet is the torso, and netzach is like the right leg moving forward. The left leg is, is hod, also moving forward. So netzach and hod are in tandem, moving back and forth. So the inner quality actually of netzach is bitachon, trust. Now this means, I'm, let me go forward with netzach. And I trust that Hashem will help me if I can come up with something real. I might have to say, no, I can't visit my mother. At this time, I might have to say, no, not now. Or I might say, how can I figure this out in a compassionate way so I can handle both of what I need to hold on to? But Netzach is like, I'm going forward. How can I make this happen? No, Netzach is the place where we might say, you know, let me look at my let me let me look at my calendar. Let me see what could be done this week. Is it possible to go for two two days? I don't know. So Netzach wants to go forward and make it happen. Hod is majesty, splendor, simplicity, the power to persevere. So Hode is going to say, okay, calm down. Don't go rushing off, make a ticket. Hode is going to say, I'm working with you on this. Together, Netzach and Hod, remember they're, they're in tandem. Netzach says, I'm, I'm ready to do it. I can do this. Hode says, okay, just a minute. How can we do this in a way? To me, moot is the inner quality, simplicity. Let's calm down. Let's look at the calendar first. What is there this week? Uh, yeah, that's there. Netzach will say, let's move it. Can I move that? Hod will say, okay, don't, don't get nervous. Calm down. Let's see if we could move it. Let's look and see if there's a ticket available to go for just two days. Hod will say, let's see if we can move this because what we have this appointment this week is important, but maybe we can move it to next week or after we come back later this week. So between Netzach and Hod, Netzach is more active. I'm ready to do it. Let's do it. I'll change it later. Hod is saying, just a second, we need to move forward, but Baruch Hashem, maybe we'll be able to make it work out. Now, Netzach and Hod work on the, on the process to get things toward action. So this has to do with initiative and persistence to help us make a, a creative plan. More of the initiative is the netzach. The calm persistence is more in hod. And now let's say netzach and hod are working together and they find that actually, yes, uh, I'm going to call and find out if it's possible to change the appointment. I'm going to also find out if there's a ticket that's reasonable and realistic. And now I'm going to be, see if I can move forward into having a plan. Now I see there is a, pos there is a possible ticket. I said, don't change the appointment yet, but is there another time we could do this next week? There is. Okay, now we're heading toward Yesod. Yesod is 
The inner quality is truth. Yesod means foundation. We're getting ready to make it happen. We're getting ready to say, this is the plan. But then I have to ask myself, since it's truth, does that really work? Does this really work? Is this something, am I just like running off and saying, sure, let me change my week. Let me change my calendar. Am I just running off or is this real? You know, I could, I would like to, I want to visit my mother. Okay, I think this is good. Now I'm gonna call my mother and say, mom, if I could come for two days, tomorrow and the next day, would you like that? Does that work for you? In other words, we're getting toward bringing it into, Netzach and Hod was where we worked on the plans. Now, if we're gonna bring it into reality, which is down here, this is the, Yesod is the bringing it into reality. Malchut is where it is in reality. So your mother might say, she can't. Or your mother would say, that would be perfect. I would love it. In which case, all the work that came through the three emotions, Chesed, Gabor, Tiferet, now the Netzach and Hod, she is ready to say, I would love it. And now you say, this is a true decision in Yesod. This is something to go forward with. That happens in Yesod, bringing it into Malchut. This is a very, very simple analysis of what's going on. So you see that in Yesod, wait a minute. So the chesed of Yesod would be, okay, I'm going to, I'm getting ready. I'm going to, you know, tell my daughter I'm going next week. I have to make sure my home is going fine. Gavura of Yesod is, okay, look, just a second. I'm getting excited now, but I have to, keep everything in line so that it really is a good trip. Fine, to ferret, this is beautiful. I'm gonna do it in a beautiful way so there's no, nothing left hanging over here so that everything works. And now in Netzach Shebi Yesod, okay, now I need to uh, change that appointment, make the ticket, what can I do? In Hod, which is the simplicity, Baruch Hashem, thank God we are able to do this. Let's calmly go forward. Let's arrange, wait, you didn't arrange a ride yet. Let's do this. And your sod shall be your sod. I'm ready to go forward. And malchut shall be your sod. I'm making this happen. So now we're going into malchut. Now, each of these six is also like the six days of the week. And malchut is like Shabbat. So Malchut is meant to bring godliness into the world, like Shabbat. So this is the taking charge with humility of acting with responsibility and devotion. On the simplest level, Malchut means now we're bringing all of this down into thinking, what we think, what we say, and what we do. So now all of this, what came from above, 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 the emuna is the faith is now being integrated in all of who we are into the place where we now take action in the world. Now, what does malchut mean? Malchut means kingship. And surprisingly enough, the inner quality of kingship is she flute. She flute means lowliness. Now that's very paradoxical. Just want to mention there's so many places to go with this. The quality of chesed is represented by Avraham. The quality of, of Gevura is represented by Yitzchak. The quality of Tiferet is represented by Yaakov. The quality of Netzach is Moshe. The quality of Hod is Aaron. The, quote, the quality of Yesod 
is Yosef at Sandik. And the quality of Malchut is David Amelch, King David. Somebody once asked King David, how did you get to be the king? And King David said, because I know who the real king is. That means, now King David was a real king, did what he needed to do. He ran the government. He made sure everything went as it should. He had an army. He made sure things should not happen as they should not happen. He was a king, but on the inside, he had lowliness. So he had malchut, which is like the grandeur of a king. On the inside, he had the lowliness of knowing who the real king is and that he is serving God. And that's what malchut is. So acting, acting, making it happen, but with humility, responsibility, devotion, that our actions in life are motivated by the highest standards of justice and righteousness. It's not about personal gain. And here the king uses the responsibility to use the power with which he is blessed to help perfect reality. So here's the place where all the decisions that we're making need to be made to serve God. So in this place, we say, if I have whatever power I have, how can I use this power to serve God? How can I use this power to bring goodness, refinement into the world, to make this a place where it's a dwelling place for God? Is this appropriate? Is this proper? And again, it could be on the simplest, simplest level where a person can say it's Shabbat. Whoops, I just noticed my tablecloth, my Shabbat tablecloth is torn. That's not suitable for the king. Now, depending on the power that we have, get a new one, repair it. If we could get a new one, maybe we could get a more beautiful new one so that we could serve God in the most beautiful way. But whatever it is, that's each person on their own level with their own power. So to be whole, a character trait has to incorporate all seven. This is the multifaceted, as we spoke about it. Love, chesed, isn't just have another lollipop, another lollipop. That's no, chesed means out of love. I can say yes, I can say no, I can do what I can do. But these are qualities that we have to work on, like the quality of gvura, which is discipline. For example, saying no to myself, self-discipline can easily become cruelty if there's an exaggeration to it. So there has to be loving kindness with the discipline. No, I'm sorry, I can't do that with you. I can't go to the beach, it's Friday afternoon. But if you'd like to come to us, please come to us. But, oh no, you wanna to go to the beach? Well, okay, good, maybe we can speak on Sunday. So there's working with this multifaceted. So you can see how we get to a second nature, which is refined. So knowing this, we can use these attributes to begin to distinguish and explain the characteristics and behavior of ourselves, our children. When we see this child has a nature to say no, this has a nature, has child has a nature to say yes, or in ourselves, I say yes too much. I need to put some more gavura in it, some more self-discipline for myself so I can say yes to what I really want to say yes to or any of these qualities. These are the action people. They're ready to go from the beginning, but when and how. So this is what we're working on in this period of time. So these attributes, which we count and refine in our 49-day journey, could be used as the foundation of a new language, a language of the soul, because we're bringing the soul into all of how we think, how we have emotions, how we go toward planning action, toward how we are in the world. 
And the expression of these seven attributes requires modification, depending on the circumstances. And res this results in a variety of ways in which a particular quality might be expressed differently to meet a specific situation. So whereas a child might say, okay, is it a yes or a no? When we learn this, we see that it's not just a yes and it's not just a no. It could be, sweetie, I would love to say yes, but it's not a good idea for you to, you wanna to get together with your friends, let's find a way that does work. So in all of this multifacetedness, we perfect each of our own seven primary attributes and the days are details and aspects of each of the weeks. And this is a journey within a journey, as Yankee Tauber says. It's a journey within a journey. So each day is a whole journey in which we are working on these qualities. And our quest for perfection proceeds all the time. We advance even in our own imperfect self. So we're really working on these qualities all the time. But this is a time that's dedicated to this. And then later on, when the divine home is restored and we will go completely out of exile, then the 49 days of our soul will amount to seven complete weeks because we will become complete in who we are meant to be. But we don't just pass through the days between Passover and Shavuot. We accumulate them. Each of these 49 days embodies another spiritual achievement, the refinement of another aspect of our personality and character. Each of these days becomes a component of our reborn selves as we go forward to internalize the freedom that was obtained at Exodus as the essence of our commitment to God as his chosen people. So, when we're counting on the second day of the count, we possess two days of the Omer process. By its final day, we have amassed 49 units of time and the specific qualities that they embody with which to approach this year's experience of Sinai. The message that we learn in this time period is that every day counts. Each day, a new opportunity to grow and accomplish and to develop onward toward our mission. Counting the Omer is the only mitzvah that spans three months because it begins in Nisan, continuing through all of Iyar and concluding in Sivan, which is when we get the Torah. Even as we do our own personal work to go forward, reaching God at Sinai, the original flash of Pesach light empowers us to keep going forward, to get to where we are going. So we have that faith from above. God is with me. God is encouraging me. That emuna above is coming down into who we are until we become integrated. That emuna becomes integrated. It's funny the way that I think about it sometimes is that we take in the bread of Amuna from above coming into us. We eat that and it's digesting for all of these seven weeks until it's completely digested and we have the faith that we began with on Pesach that now we stand before Hashem with that faith really integrated into who we are. So sometimes we feel divine providence guiding us forward and we sense that we're being guided with what we need in order to live with life's challenges and to have the strength to deal with them. And then we realize that we're part of something greater than ourselves. And we realize that we are the receiver of all of our gifts. There are times when we feel that less, the Hashkacha Pratit, the divine providence less, and then our individuality dominates and we sense our own strengths and weaknesses and the responsibility to work on ourselves. So sometimes we have moments when we receive that our vision is integrating into our personal work. And then we're aware of the divine in our lives, 
which become part of our integrating of ourselves and our personality. So this time of counting the Omer is a special time to integrate what is higher than ourselves into the work that we do to achieve true refinement. It's also a time of excitement, just like the Israelites eagerly looked forward to the events that would happen at Sinai, we also relive their excitement and anticipation. Now we're in the week of Yesod, we're looking at the calendar, almost Yesod, then comes Malchut. And after that, yes, it's Yom Tov. We're going to be receiving the Torah again. So Israel was not a nation just because of freedom, but because of Torah. Freedom became real only when it was given direction. That's what we're working on now. Bringing godly direction into when we say yes, when we say no, when we say beautiful resolution and how we go forward. <clears throat> so the freedom becomes real when it's given direction. People could either be a slave to the world, to their jobs, fashion, what others think of them, how much money they have, whether they fit into the group. That's my choice. Or I could allow myself to be the creator of my life, which means I allow my creator in. That instead of letting somebody else's opinion make me into a slave, I want to let God into my life. I can realize that my truest self is aligned with God's blueprint for creation. That I am part of God's blueprint for creation. So when I give myself over to the divine will, I'm giving fullest expression to my deepest self. Torah gives us a purpose, a pattern that gives significance to our every day. So even though a person might be denying the ego instant gratification, remember, it's no to the third lollipop. We don't want to return to Egyptian slavery, to the meaningless treadmill of having to fit into a valueless world. The mitzvot bring spiritual importance to the ordinary everyday situations of living because we take the ordinary and bring God in. So this world becomes a godly place. <clears throat> so then we become, these mitzvot keep us conscious always that God is interested in what I'm doing. God would like me to do this at this time. That's why he gave this commandment, this instruction. Do this, don't do this. So at no time is the Jew ever free in the sense of wild. There is always a standard by which every action is judged. <clears throat> he has no refuge from responsibility because True freedom means I choose. I choose God. I choose to bring awareness of God into the world. I choose to make this a godly world. So that means freedom means responsibility. So during work and meals and worship and recreation, equally, the pattern of Torah makes these activities avenues to God. So freedom for the Jew is release from oppression, but not from self-control. <clears throat> because true freedom is all of godliness is in, in being expressed in me. I choose to steer the car to the right or the left because I have some place that I'm going. I have a purpose. So Passover, Pesach, permits man to develop freely with no interference by anyone with his religious activities. <clears throat> this freedom became real only when it was given direction. In other words, he got the freedom on Pesach, but the direction comes on Shavuot. 
So that's when the Torah showed us, shows us what we can become. So Pesach and Shavuot are complementary festivals, deliberately connected by the counting of the Omer to show that they can't be separated. So we go from the freedom of Pesach to the realization of how to connect God and bring godliness into who we are and what we do in the world through Shavuot. So together they teach us that achievement in the world is not a free for all, but it's adult activation of productive obligations. <clears throat> so we see that in order to be ready to do this, we have to work on our character traits. Otherwise, what happens is that people could say with their first nature, I don't feel like doing that. Why do I have to do that? But when we have a developed character, we can say, yes, now is the right time to do this. No, this is not the right time to do it as much as I would like to do it. Or how can I do this in a way that would bring godliness into the world in the most beautiful way, in a most true way, in a way that brings my soul into my body and into my reality in the world to make this a home for God. So may we count the Omer every day. For some people, for many people, it's very interesting that, that these names, Chesed, Gevur, Tevar, these are Kabbalistic expressions and everybody uses them. Even the people who don't learn Kabbalah this is inside the Siddur. Everyone says chesed, shebe chesed, gavur, shebe chesed, shebe chesed, shebe chesed. So there's more here that everybody relates to godliness coming through. Not necessarily does everybody think about an intention for the day. Um, you can find one booklet that talks about, uh, Simon Jacobson talks about the Omer, he has a little booklet of intentions for what the day could meet. There are many of them. I think I have four. But understanding what we're understanding, we can also figure out to some degree ourselves what this day is about. But whether we think about what it means or we just make the day count and we count the day, that is enough to recognize that every day counts and do the growing and development that we can each day to make this a godly world. So may our day, every day be blessed and may we learn and accomplish and do what we're here to do in reality. And soon we'll have Mashiach and then we're gonna see the perfection of this, but we are in this onward growing process. May it be with success and blessed for each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. Thanks for the clarity, Mary. Amen. Amen. Amen.